And welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. As always, the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets and a lot by way of negative price action. We are going to get into all of that and much more. First up, let's take a quick look at some of the headline news that drove the markets lower last week. And we are in that phase where generally good news for the economy is being viewed as bad news because it's supporting the case for pushing out that potential rate hike cut campaign from the Federal Reserve. So first up last week was news that U.S. retail sales rose sharply in Q1. And the thinking there is that it could boost GDP, which of course is the economic indicator, so stronger economy, not so much lowering of rates. So also we did get news on the home builders front. Home building confidence did drop amid mortgage rates jumping to 7%. And we also did see new home construction saw their biggest drop in four years. So you're seeing that shift in those areas that are sensitive to a potentially rising interest rate environment. And Fed Chair Powell did come out and speak on Wednesday, and he warned that rates may need to stay high because they are targeting that 2% inflation rate and inflation remains sticky. Now, of note, next week, we have a very key economic inflation data that will be released, PCE. And this is very closely watched by the Federal Reserve, and that will come out on Friday. Also, earnings season picks up quite a bit next week. We have Meta Platforms, Tesla, Microsoft, and Caterpillar to name just a few. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at those markets and see where did we close for the week. And here we are. This is a daily price chart of the S&P 500. And this index did drop over 3% last week. I'm going to share with you a view and some characteristics that really shifted the tone here in the markets. And these are items that we talked about in last week's report. And that was the strong possibility that this index would close below this key 50-day simple moving average. And we did see that take place. Definitely a metric that's very closely watched by large institutions as well as other traders. And oftentimes, it will precede further weakness, which of course is what we have seen. That are RSI already was in negative territory, but we are drifting lower. And this past week, that MACD moving average convergence divergence joined the RSI in negative territory and is heading lower. Now, from here, what I did want to share with you is a view of the S&P 500. And this is something that subscribers to my MEM Edge report were alerted to. And that was the strong possibility that we could see a longer term negative shift in the broader markets characteristics and the weekly chart that was signaled by this MACD crossover black line down through the red. And that did take shape as well. My twice week Weekly report also has alerts when we see these kinds of shifts, and in subscribers were alerted to that longer term outlook shift that took place last week. Let's take a look at another characteristic as long as we are looking at the S&P 500, and in essence, really sharing with you what capitulation looks like. Now, we are certainly not there at this point in time. This is more an educational piece, something that you can tuck away for future in the event that we do see selling continue in the broader markets. And then from here, I will pivot and share with you NVIDIA because we did see quite a bit of selling in that stock, particularly today on heavy volume, what you would want to be on the lookout for to indicate a reversal. So in essence, again, educationally, because this was, of course, a very sharp drop during that 2020 bear, I am not anticipating that by any means. But when looking for the capitulation, what you are going to be on the lookout for is when in a stock or the broader markets, if they hit a new low and then buyers come in on that dip so that it closes in the upper portion of its trading range for the day. And that did take place on March 20th of 2020. Now, of note, 
It is not an all-in signal. You will, from there, need to have buy rules so that you don't get in too early. Quite simply, we need only go back three days earlier where we did hit a new low in price, and that would take us to March 17th. And the markets did close the day in the upper reaches of the trading range. However, buy rules are going to be equally as significant as sell rules. And you will want to wait until you get that confirmation that the new uptrend has evolved, whether it's that MD crossover or that RSI. There are other systems that I work very closely with as far as identifying that, that it is safe to get back into the markets and not only that super profitable. So that is what I did want to share with you. From here, we can take a quick look at NVIDIA and we can see that with today's selling, we have broken below that key 50-day simple moving average. We now have that MACD now in negative territory. The significance here is, and I will broaden out this scope as well, but when you see a leadership name begin to break, that is also an indication of a bigger shift when market leadership is beginning to weaken. So it's something that you will want to keep a very close eye on. So from here, as far as what to be on the lookout for possible buy signal with NVIDIA, it will be that type of selling activity, buyers coming in on that dip, and then again, having those other characteristics in line as well. So let's go ahead from here. I did want to share with you a view of what's taking place beneath the surface of the markets. And we are going to take a look at the 11 sectors in the S&P 500. So we're looking at a two-month daily price chart view. I have that RSI here, and we're sorting them in descending order. So your stronger sectors are up here at the forefront and take a look very much defensive in nature. We're seeing utilities up here up almost 2% last week, and then also consumer staples up 1.4%. We can also take a look at financials. We had a number of bank stocks report today and over the week. Next week, we are going to see a lot more by way of bank earnings. So we can take a quick look at XLF. This is the ETF for financials. And you can see that we had this reversal this week up almost 1%, but we are still below this key 50-day simple moving average. We do not have that positive RSI yet. And then also that MACD not giving us a bullish signal quite yet. We'll take a look at the bank grouping, which is a significant portion of financials as we move through here today. Also, of course, want to be aware of that weakness. And many of you that are invested and closely watching the markets will know that technology got hit down over 6% this week. And this is something that I talked about in the sense that overall technology has not been participating for at least six weeks. We can even go back to this February period, and it had been by and large sitting out the rally that was shaping up and still taking place elsewhere in the markets. So with XLK, we now have that negative RSI, but we are in an oversold position. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that, that MACD down here in negative territory as well with that rising interest rate environment hurting these growth names. But there is are other reasons as well that we'll get into today. Another high growth area that did not fare well last week, this is consumer discretionary. And this is despite that strong retail sales data, the group was down over 4% and has broken below that 200-day simple moving average. Now, from here, we can see that XLY, this consumer discretionary sector, also has an oversold RSI, and we can go back historically and really just have a good sense of what to be on the lookout for. We certainly had that nice downtrend reversal shaping up at the end of October last year. Once we broke below that 200 day with the RSI close to being in an oversold position, but it will take a lot as far as reversing. And from here, if we go back to this November period, a lot of this was earnings related. 
and we are in the beginning stages of earnings. So, of course, as always, we will be keeping a very close eye on that potential possibility as it relates to a reversal. So let's go ahead beyond these sectors and take a look at some of these underlying industry groups that are a part of these bigger sectors. And again, two-month chart, we're looking at strength to weakness and take a look up here at the forefront. Again, are the yield on that 10-year treasury. So we weren't up, we were up about 2%, but you can see we do appear at this time to perhaps have peaked with this rate on that 10-year getting up to 4.7. We've kind of settled in here at this 4.6% level, but of note is the fact that it is still elevated. If we go back historically and look at prior market periods where the markets struggled, it was in a rising interest rate environment. We did get up here above that 5% level. So we're certainly not there, but 4.6 is well above that 4% level that historically has moved growth stocks lower. So another area that you will want to really stay on top of next week's inflation data, of course, could easily move this particular yield higher. Also taking a look here, Brent crude oil, which had held up well. And here again, we are still elevated. We are at $87 per barrel. We had been sitting up here around 90, 91, but anything realistically above that 80 level is quite high. But we did see bank stocks sell off less than the broader markets, but did not really sustain that strength that we saw earlier in the week. Let's take a look at this banking group. It's KRE is the ticker symbol. It's the retail banking ETF. And you can see that it really, for the most part, I've talked about this over the weeks where we've had these head fakes into these banks and then they falter. So today we did see a 2.6% rally, but overall the group is not healthy. We have negative momentum characteristics. Your trend overall is still quite negative, so not ready for prime time yet. And realistic, no real reason for this area to be moving up here to this forefront, except again today, we did see some nice earnings. XRT is that retail ETF, and you can see that it did stabilize a bit this week after suffering two to three weeks of a decline. So again, the kind of thing that you will want to just keep a close eye on, this view that I'm sharing with you can be very easily set up and you can look at it on a very regular basis. Once we do see this nice leveling off, at some point in time, you will eventually be on the lookout for that downtrend reversal because overall, retailers did get hit. I'll share with you a couple of names that were heavier weighted retailers that were up today and share with you why. And then we can all take a look and see if it is at all sustainable. So then down here on this lower right quartile week again, that's biotech's IBB down almost 4%. And I've talked about this in the past. When you see these biotech stocks sell off, it really is among other signals. It is telling us that investor confidence in the markets is weak. These stocks overall are risky. Only about 20 names out of over 500 are exhibiting earnings. They're still in their exploratory phases. So purchasing these stocks, again, has that extra risk. But we can see here too, we are in an overbought position, similar to back here, always on that lookout for what could potentially at some point in time evolve into a down trend reversal, get that confidence back among investors in these broader markets. Now, talking about tech, we would be remiss not to take a look at semiconductors. This is SOXX, one of several semiconductor ETFs, and it was down six and a half percent. We talked about NVIDIA. There were other heavyweights because last week we had two major semiconductor companies release their earnings and 
most important was management's guidance for growth going forward was weak. So that really startled investors to have that weakening chip demand outlook, even though AI related chip demand remains in place, there are other areas that remain weak. So we are very much in negative territory. This is what I talked about in last Friday's show. If you didn't see it, uh, you can take a look because at that time, semiconductors were holding above that 50 day, but I talked about the underlying weakness in the group and the fact that it was not playable. So other areas that we can take a quick look at here. I talked about home builders coming under selling pressure now below that key 50 day simple moving average. And one other metric that you can pay attention to when looking at these charts as they potentially begin to break below key support is keeping an eye on these shorter term moving averages. This is that 10 day. And then we have that 21 day simple moving average. And when that shorter term moving average in this case closes below the longer term, both the 21 and the 50, that is known as a death cross. Now, it's not a sell signal. It is a secondary indicator, but it is one worth noting. If we go back to this August period, this was that rising interest rate environment back then. And when we had that death cross occurrence, what may take place is rally attempts are then met with resistance at lower and lower levels if we continue to see this deterioration. From here, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these names that were on the move higher. There actually were areas and stocks that did trade higher, and it was all about earnings. So first up here, I want to share with you American Express, and they came out with their earnings today. And it was just such a great looking chart. I didn't want to pass it up, but the reality is the company experienced very strong earnings and it had everything to do with the usage of their cards among wealthier individuals, those that pay their card balances off each and every month. And we can see that in turn, the stock was up over 6%. We experienced this nice base breakout on heavy volume. We can see this MACD poised to have a bullish crossover black line up through the red. Now, if only we had a bullish backdrop to the market, I would be chasing you to the trading desk. But that is certainly quite constructive. Another area that I wanted to share with you, we talked about bank stocks on the move higher. So with stockcharts.com, for instance, very simply at the beginning of the day, as the day progresses, if you have this set up with the market movers, and for me, I like to see those names that are up the most on any given day with the S&P 500 and a quick view, you will see it is littered with financials, AXP, Fifth Third Bank, and other banks. We talked about uh, consumer staples with uh, on the move higher, and that's SM Smuckers. But from here, you can very quickly take a look at those names to see, are there any names that are coming in looking constructive? So we talked about banks being close to turning bullish. Here's Fifth Third Bank. They came out with very good numbers today. Here's that gap up in response, poised for a base breakout, and then poised to have a bullish MACD crossover, nice high volume on today's selling. So this would hit my watch list so that when those banks turn positive, that would be a name. So SJM is Schmuckers, and you can see that it also had a sharp rally today in an otherwise dismal market, but not ready for prime time. We are coming out of an oversold position for those of you that like to bottom fish, you will want to use historical precedents back here in December as your guide, as the stock gets certainly firms up more and gets more constructive. You will, for me, I would like to know the news that is driving that stock higher. So we did talk about NVIDIA. Let's take a quick look at the other magnificent seven names. And again, I have the two-month daily price chart view, sorted strength to weakness, and it was a very tough week for these names. The NASDAQ was down 5.5%. And when looking at these underlying heavyweights within that NASDAQ, Microsoft was down 5.5% ahead of earnings. 
every other name. Actually, I would be remiss to not point out how Alphabet is really holding in quite well, down only 2.5% for the week, still up above that 21-day simple moving average with positive momentum characteristics. And from here, a quick look at these other magnificent seven names, you will see that they are breaking below that 50-day simple moving average. Here's Meta Platforms due to report their earnings next week. And as we move through, what we can also see is Microsoft really deteriorating ahead of the release of their earnings as well. So again, next week, really could be quite pivotal as it relates to where these companies come out with their numbers. And most important is their outlook for growth going forward. And from there, we will also want to keep an eye on that inflation data because it could be quite pivotal for the markets. If we continue to see weakness in these leadership names, it's not going to bode well, at least over the near term. I certainly wouldn't want to be an alarmist by any means. Now, from here, let's go ahead and take a look at some outperformance that took place last week. And so what we're looking at here is a comparative chart, and it is taking us back to the mid-January. We have the NASDAQ, we have the S&P 500, and then we have some ETFs. And first up here at the top is that Vanguard Growth ETF, very heavily weighted in those M7 names. And you can see how it really led the markets going into even yesterday. We had peaked up here, the, this particular ETF up 10.5%, and take a look, quite the topple down here for that group because of those M7 names. But really what I also wanted to point out to you is the Vanguard Value ETF. It's going to be more of those consumer staples type names that I talked about being on the move and take a look. I Hopefully you can see this little upward curve here taking place. So we are seeing that move into value. We'll be keeping a close eye on that. And for those of you that haven't already, I wanted to share with you this link to a trial of my MEM Edge report. And that link is down below for $7. You will receive that twice weekly report all about sector rotation, what to be on the lookout for, and alerts as the markets potentially move. And that's it for this week. Everyone have a fantastic weekend. I'm going to look for you here again next Friday.